This is a picture of an old post office built in 1903, and it's still standing in Chillicothe, Ohio, which is in the southern part of the state. And in today's video, I want to give you a little bit of history of this building. I'm also going to give you a tour, and then I want to share some very interesting facts about the entire United States Postal Service, how it got started, and some of the major events along the way. This particular post office was built in 1903, and it actually functioned as an official post office all the way to 1966. It was in operation from 1907 to 1966. This building is almost 200 years old, and it's still standing. This building is over 200 years old, and it's in very good shape, as you can see here. The foyer is huge. This is an area where people, the public, were allowed to come, and they had to talk to the postmaster through the windows and um, now if you look through you can see that there's a cocktail area they the new owners use this as a wedding venue and they also have a, a prohibition bar that they've set up that they open on the weekends and of course all of the bartenders dress up from that time period The customer service windows are made out of metal and they're still in place. The main hall, which is huge and holds 175 people, is now used again as a wedding venue, but back then that's where it sat all of the postal workers and the employees. So this was a huge post office. The elegant stairway going up is all wood, metal railings. It's a beautiful building. This has inspired me to do a little bit of research about the Postal Service in general. The first post office was actually started in 1639. And the reason for it was so that the new colonists could um, send things back and forth to, to, the, to England for where, where they came from. And they had to come up with some kind of a system to do that. Originally, the person receiving the mail had to pay for the postage. The other person would send things from their maybe their hometown or some memories or some pictures, some letters, but you receiving it, you had to pay the price. It wasn't until Benjamin Franklin was appointed as Philadelphia's postmaster that things began to become more organized. He had a, a, a knack for that. Um, there's a lot of history about him and some of the things that he accomplished. But it was in 1737 that he really helped things get more organized. There's a lot of history as far as the Postal Service becoming a job where different people contract it to where the government finally took over. And I've got that link below because it's very interesting. Lots of corruption, lots of price gouging and things like that. So that was really the part of the reason the government finally took it over. Today we put our mail or letter in an envelope and we seal it and we deliver it and it gets there. Back in the beginning, people would just write their correspondence on sheets of paper. They would t uh, fold them and tie it with a string and then put like melted wax to hold it and so that it, that would secure it. A very quick note, even though the postal service was becoming something, you know, to help people correspond more easily, it wasn't really until the late 1800s that farm or rural delivery started to happen. So you got to remember, you still had this whole population living out in the country that did not have that easy access as everybody else did. So things progressed first in the cities and then into the rural areas. Now, one of the way, things I want to talk about next is how did the mail get there? How was it delivered? How was it transported? And originally it was transported with um, riders. They called them post riders. And these usually men would get on a horse and literally have a, a mail bag and deliver all of the mail. And this, this was the way it was done for a very long period of time. And you got to remember back in the beginning, these people sometimes would get robbed um, of their, their bag. Um, so it was a dangerous job it, during that time. We had post riders in the United States as early as 1673. And they they would travel along post roads that the Constitution authorized and, the, and the, the federal government eventually created. So at first, it might not have been as easy, but over time, they did start creating roads for them to ride on. It really wasn't until the early 1800s that the stagecoach was used. They also started using steamboats to transport mail, stagecoaches, and railroads so mail was becoming faster the roads were starting to be better and easier to travel on so 
things were starting to get a little bit modernized into the 1800s. In 1860, they, they even started what they called a Pony Express. And this is where if you really wanted something fast, they would put it on horseback called the Pony Express and things would get faster. Um, it was costly. Uh, the mail, it would cost $5 per one half ounce. And then later it was reduced to a dollar. But in the beginning, it was pretty much very expensive. Now you might think the first airmail was created when the first airplane was created, but it was before then. Actually in 1870, they tried sending letters by using balloons. So I found that very interesting. Well, I wanna go back real quick to the post office where I showed you a tour. They had, they actually had two big safes in this building. And I was very curious about why they had them there. But back then, um, they put valuables there. People would uh, deliver or, or order some valuables or have valuables that they wanted sent by mail and the post office would lock them up in a safe. And there was also um, a lot of more of their, what they called the a more valuable or special mail. And they had these two safes that they would lock them up at night. So obviously since there were stage coaches and then later trucks for delivery, we might ask when did the first mailbox um, happen? When did they start creating mailboxes and putting them on every home? The first truck that was used, it was a minivan, um, and by it was a night in 1931, it was a Ford Model A mail van, and it was used to deliver mail. So again, it wasn't until the 1900s until we started having vehicles deliver the mail. And even more interesting, when did the first mailbox become? You can see this picture here, they were encouraging people to get mailboxes because it would make it easier on the mailmen or mail persons to deliver the mail. In the beginning, it was optional, and they didn't really start the small letter boxes and the little slots in the door weren't even developed until the late 1850s and into the 1890s. People were still not required to have a mailbox until 1923. The post office mandated that every household install a mailbox or a mail slot if you wanted to have home delivery. Otherwise, you had to go to the post office and pick it up. So 1923 until all the mailboxes were developed or mandated by the government. I wanted to end here talking about the price of postage just to send a letter. I can remember, I was um, grew up in the 60s, and I remember when my first stamp that I recognized and understood about mail was six cents. So in six, 1968, the price to send a letter was eight cents. And I remember my parents getting upset because it increased to eight cents. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, what's eight cents? I was a child. Um, I, I looked at the price of the increase for every 10 years. And in 78, it was 15 cents. 1988 it went up to 25 1998 33 2008 42 and then 2018 50 cents now if you notice these numbers they went up roughly 10 cents every 10 years so a penny a year well now today 2023 it went up 10 cents since 2018 so five years so it's gone up two cents a year and it is now roughly 60 cents um definitely going up higher and higher and i hope you enjoyed the history of the post office if you ever get to southern ohio and chillicothe lee in chillicothe definitely visit the town it's very historic beautiful buildings all over the place and this building here the old post office now called the postmark is gorgeous and it is a wedding venue so if you're looking to have a wedding um, definitely check it out or check it out on the weekends and visit the prohibition bar that they have set up have a blessed day and I'll see you on the next video.